Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvellous video. This time, superhero cartoons and animated movies have been widely popular for several decades, with both Marvel and DC putting the best foot forward in this regard. While the animated content by DC has been undoubtedly superior, and they've created an extensive gallery of animated series and movies, Marvel isn't too far behind, and they too have their own collection to appease the fans. Over the years, Marvel has made use of some of the best characters like Spider-Man, the X-Men, and others to create some unforgettable animated shows and movies, and in this video, we'll explore every single one of them. We try to do this chronologically, taking you through the earliest projects to the most recent ones. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Cap, look out! There's something zeroing in on you! Captain America, 1966. This is the only animated series dedicated to Captain America, and it also happens to be one of the earliest Marvel animated projects. It happens to be a part of an extended animated series called the Marvel Superheroes, which comprised of five segments featuring five superheroes, the first one being Captain America. It takes you back to the origins of Captain America back in 1941, where a top-secret experiment is successfully conducted and Steve Rogers goes from a regular human to one with maximized superhuman potential, Captain America. After helping the US in the World War efforts, Captain America continues to fight the evil forces and the episodes explore his numerous adventures. The show was made in the mid-60s, and you'll have to excuse the shabby animation work at times. However, story-wise, it has to be one of the most accurate portrayals of Captain America that stays true to the comic books. The episodes may lack continuity, but they make up for this with some very entertaining stories. The voice actors do a great job in rendering the characterizations, and they deliver the larger-than-life superheroes and villains perfectly. Overall, this might be nothing unforgettable in today's times, but it was the start of something great and deserves a round of applause as a pioneering effort. Mighty Thor 1966. This is another segment of the Marvel superheroes, and this time we get a look at the Norse god of thunder and lightning, the mighty Thor. A lame doctor named Don Blake can use an old walking stick and transform him into his true form, which is that of Thor. The stick turns into his powerful hammer, Mjolnir, and in this new superhero avatar, Thor must protect the world from all kinds of threats, including the ones coming from his own evil half-brother, Loki. One of the biggest reasons behind the crazy popularity of Thor is his human emotions, even with his incredible superpowers. This animated series explores this side of Thor, and the episodes give you all kinds of stories from Thor battling deadly enemies to Thor traveling to Earth from Asgard to meet his lady love, Jane Foster. There's even an episode where Thor takes on Hercules, and the action and characters across the series are quite impressive. The animation might be outdated, but it is fun to watch, and looks like the scenes are straight out of a comic book. If you're a Thor fan, this might be a wonderful animated version to check out one of the best Thor adaptations of all time. The Submariner 1966. The Submariner is one of the five superheroes featured in the Marvel superheroes, and it tells the story of Namor, the hybrid son of a human seaman and an Atlantean princess. He has superhuman strength and can breathe in both air and water, besides his ability to fly and command all aquatic creatures. Armed with these unique powers, Namor protects his city Atlantis from all kinds of threats like Kang the Conqueror and evil surface dwellers. Prince Namor's story is easily one of the most underrated Marvel story arcs, and this anti-hero starts off as someone who hates the human race for mistreating the oceans and aquatic life. Eventually, he becomes one of the superheroes and his larger-than-life adventures are the heart of this series. The animation department doesn't raise the expectations too high, but the series is backed by some solid sound effects voice acting, and fun scripts. It's meant for the true comic book fans, as the heroics of the Prince of Atlantis are depicted to perfection. The Submariner will offer a welcome break to anyone who's tired of all the CGI-laden cinematic stuff from Marvel in the recent past. Iron Man, 1966. Tony Stark, the billionaire playboy and philanthropist superhero, is easily the most charming and coolest superhero in the Marvel Universe. This segment of the Marvel Superheroes tells the story of how Tony Stark becomes Iron Man after an invention to keep his injured heart alive soon evolves into a mighty power suit. Later, he decides to use this armored suit to fight crime, 
and thus begins the antics of the invincible Iron Man, the superhero who fights in style. Like the other segments of Marvel Superheroes cartoon, Iron Man also takes a few subtle creative liberties with the source material. The story of an ordinary businessman turning into a superhero is entertaining, and this old-school classic manages to capture the best features of the superhero. Aside from his powerful suit, Iron Man also has a necessary weakness that makes him more human than the other Marvel superheroes. The production values are quite stimulating for its time, and although a couple of episodes fail to generate excitement, it's still a must-watch show for those willing to experience the beginning of the Marvel animated universe. Hulk, 1966. Bruce Banner is a nuclear scientist whose life changes forever while supervising a test of his gamma bomb. After getting exposed to the radiation, Banner transforms into the monstrous Hulk whenever he's subjected to any kind of stress. This green giant isn't entirely in control over his emotions, but in his transformed state, the Hulk has to fight General Ross and his men as they try to hunt down the likes of him. There's also the threat of an evil scientist who was exposed to a similar gamma radiation, and a little bit of stress is all it takes for the Hulk to fight them all. This is another crucial segment of the Marvel superheroes, and it's strongly recommended for all the fans of Jack Kirby. His comic books come to life, even though, like the other segments, Hulk 2 lacks in animation supremacy. Each and every episode is well written so that they don't have to rely on the sharp looks and visual treats, and Max Ferguson steals the show as the voice of the Hulk. The theme song is catchy as well, <laughs> and this is true for each segment of the Marvel superheroes. It's easy to bring out a hundred flaws and criticize the backdated creation, but we beg to differ and rate this quite highly among Marvel cartoons from the 60s. Spider-Man 1967. Spider-Man has to be among the most popular Marvel superheroes, and this is the first animated series featuring the Web Slinger. It tells the story of Peter Parker, who gains spider-like superpowers after getting bitten by a radioactive spider. After he fails to stop the murder of his Uncle Ben, he realizes the need for being responsible about his abilities and fights all forms of crime in the city. If the late 60s CBS network belonged to the brilliance of Hanna-Barbera, the ABC network was ruled by Marvel cartoons. This version of Spider-Man is one of the most memorable takes on the superhero because he has a character with the coolest wisecracks and the most atmospheric background score. The visuals are quite commendable for the times, and the episodes have been taken straight from the pages of the comic books. The episodes offer plenty of laughs, and midway through the series, Ralph ba and midway through the series, Ralph Bakshi took over as the producer, which brings about an evident rise in the quality. In a nutshell, this Spider-Man series started the domination of Marvel in animation, and there was no looking back since then. I kind of miss that Bunsen burner when he's gone. Fantastic Four, 1967. This Hanna-Barbera production sets out to capture the adventures of the popular Marvel superhero team, the Fantastic Four. The four superheroes are Reed Richards, his wife Sue Storm, her brother Johnny Storm, and Reed's friend Ben Grimm. While traveling in a rocket, they were bombarded with cosmic rays, which gave them all some unique superpowers. Reed Richards can stretch himself to unimaginable proportions, while his wife can turn invisible. Johnny Storm can burst into flames, and Ben Grimm has incredible super strength. They work as a team and fight against villains like Doctor Doom and the Mole Man, who seek to conquer the world. You can tell by watching this series that the makers knew how to translate comic books to the screen and keep the comic reading elements intact. This originality makes up for the average animation work, and each one of the stories mirrors the essence of comic books of that era. There are crucial comic reliefs in the episodes without making the jokes too important, and we love the mysterious and suspenseful elements in the stories. If we must find a chink in the armor, Doctor Doom as a deadly villain could have been portrayed better. True classics never die, and this is one of those unforgettable shows that'll be remembered for decades to come, even though better versions keep coming. An incredible piece of new equipment. Careful, Ben. That's a ton of equipment. The Fantastic Four, 1978. Almost ten years after the release of the previous Fantastic Four animated series, this version brings back the four superheroes who gain powers after being exposed to cosmic radiation. Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Girl, The Thing, and their advanced data-crammed robot Herbie make up a deadly superhero team and function from their headquarters on top of the Baxter Building in New York. Watch them in action as they take on villainous forces like the Frightful Four and other forms of evil. One of the most noticeable changes from the 60s series is the absence of the Human Torch or the brother of Sue Storm. This was consciously done because of concerns that this superhero might prompt kids to set themselves on fire. As long as you accept the changes, you'll enjoy the fun storytelling and the cheesy comedy. The chemistry between the Thing and Herbie the Robot is amusing, and the innocence in the plot is hard to find today. There are some good action sequences, although the modern-day viewers might find the narrative a bit lacking in this department. The older generation animation style works for us. We still can't get over the classic theme tune after all these years. Spider-Man 1970. 
Spider-Woman 1979, with Spider-Man becoming a raging hit. It didn't take long for Stan Lee to come up with the female version of the Spider-powered superhero. Spider-Woman, however, has a slightly different origin story, where she was bitten by a poisonous spider and injected with an experiment serum by her scientist father to save her life. She gained the ability to fire concussive venom blasts and could also shoot spider webs from her body. She also had something similar to Spider-Sense, where she had the gift of enhanced hearing. Currently, she works as an editor for a magazine and secretly fights crime in her superhero avatar. This may have been a rather short-lived animated series, but it was truly fantastic and engaging. The episodes were action-packed, and even though the character had too many similarities with Spider-Man, there were some original bits as well. The makers were wise enough to change the overly complicated origin of Spider-Woman from the comic books. She fought a unique rogues gallery, including familiar villains like the Kingpin and Dormammu. Joan Van Ogg did a pretty decent job as the voice of Spider-Woman, and the other voice actors were also impressive in their respective roles. We love this neatly made Marvel cartoon series that immortalized one of the many female superhero versions that were created during the 70s. Fred and Barney Meet the Thing 1979. This series features two different cartoon segments, where one is a revival of the Flintstones, and the other is based on the crucial superhero member from the Fantastic Four, The Thing. Ben Grimm, aka The Thing, is tired of his superhero life, but his efforts to become human again misfires, and he ends up being turned into a teenager. He chooses to live as a gangly teenager, so that his life has some normalcy, but when the situation demands, you can still turn back into the thing and save the day. This animated series isn't going to please you if you aren't cool about random changes. The previous Fantastic Four series omitted the Human Torch, and this version of the thing being a teenager isn't appreciated by the hardcore comic book fans. The narrative isn't too sure about whether it wants to be an action-adventure or a comedy drama, but it's still going to be a fun experience. The lack of supervillains can be annoying, and it's probably because of the hate received by the segment that it was sandwiched between the Fred and Barney segments. It's certainly not the most perfect version of the thing, but it might be worth checking out this experimental project for the laughs. Tomb of Dracula, 1980. This animated movie is based on a 70-issue comic series published by Marvel, and it tells the story of the iconic Dracula with a new twist. Fearing persecution in Transylvania, he flees to Boston and kidnaps Satan's intended bride Dolores and makes her his wife. They even have a son named Janus, but their happy family is interrupted after Satanists kill Janus and Satan takes away Dracula's powers. To make matters worse, human vampire hunters are also on his trail and his dead son is restored to life to hunt Dracula down. Can Dracula regain his powers and set things right for his family? The movie is loosely inspired by the Source comics, and the makers make quite a few changes to the story. The atmospheric nature of the narrative will please the horror fans, and there's plenty of dark stuff to provide the thrills. There's also some campy elements, and some much-needed violence and gore to add to the entertainment factor. The voice acting is pretty standard for Japanese animation, and the visuals leave nothing to complain about. An animation project featuring the mighty Dracula has seldom been better handled. This underrated and missing Marvel masterpiece deserves a position on your watch list if you haven't checked it out already. Does that feel better now? Monster of Frankenstein 1981. This anime film is an adaptation of Marvel's The Monster of Frankenstein comic series. It revolves around the misunderstood monster who's only dangerous because of his confusion. He only seeks love, and we see the killer version change into a compassionate creature after being treated well by a family. Meanwhile, his creator Victor is also out to hunt him down, and a sequence of tragedies ensures that the liked Frankenstein's sort is never going to be his. Monster of Frankenstein is a dark and gritty tale that dares to stray from the norms of the usual creature feature. The narrative has a lot of social messages, and the tragic protagonist offers a thought-provoking take on humanity, which fails in the movie. The animation style is pleasantly unique, and it makes a very clever use of light and its effect on the monster. The vocal work in the English dubbed version is quite effective, which is not usually the case for dubbed projects. The story is definitely not for children because there are plenty of bloody violent sequences and things get shockingly graphic from time to time. All said and done, Every Frankenstein fan should check out this tragic take on the fearsome monster. Hey, can I believe my little shell-like ears? Get your daily bugle here! Spider-Man 1981 This is the second Spider-Man cartoon series after the 1967 version started things off. It explores the familiar story of Peter Parker, who gains superpowers after being exposed to a radiated arachnid during a school experiment. He fights crime in New York City, and this sequel to the 1967 TV series shows Spider-Man fight some notable villains like Green Goblin, 
Sandman, Dr. Octopus, and some new faces who didn't appear in the previous series. Although the animation techniques had evolved leaps and bounds by now, the visuals of the 1967 series somehow still seem superior. However, this takes nothing away from the brilliance of the show, where some fun villains like Gadgeteer, who shrinks Spider-Man, make things interesting. Our friendly neighborhood superhero mostly works alone in this series, and the only team-up is with Captain America when they're up against the Red Skull. The music used in the show fits the tone perfectly, and the voice actors deliver a compelling performance. While this may not make it to the top three among all the Spider-Man animated shows, it's still regarded as a worthy entry in the overall Spider-Man canon. Norman Osborn's become the Green Goblin again. Now he's after Mona. Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, 1981 Peter Parker is still the crime-fighting vigilante Spider-Man who studies at Empire State University. This time, however, he's not alone, and he's joined by two other superheroes, Iceman and Firestar, who are his fellow students. They team up to secretly fight all the evil forces in the city, and they even live together in Peter's Aunt May's house with a pet dog. As they take on some major Marvel supervillains, they're also helped occasionally by other superheroes in the Marvel Universe. This series was produced at the same time as Spider-Man, and a different voice actor was cast as Spider-Man and the other major characters. It even premiered on the exact same date, and the year 1981 was definitely a treat for all Spider-Man fans out there. Spider-Man and his amazing friends has a lot of innovation, with characters like Firestar brought in exclusively for the show. The episodes come up with some really good plots, and there are some exciting action sequences along the way. The narrative does move away from the original comic because Firestar is supposed to be around 10 years younger than Spider-Man and Iceman, but these differences hardly affect the viewing experience. Overall, this fun Spider-Man team-up and his adventures are a must-watch for all the fans to witness how excellent the Marvel Animated Universe was even before the advent of MCU. The Incredible Hulk, 1982 We're all aware of the struggles of Dr. Bruce Banner ever since he got exposed to gamma radiation. The slightest of stress transforms him into a giant green monstrosity, and now Banner is trying to find a cure for himself. However, life isn't easy for this brute superhero with berserker rage, as he has to fight various monsters and supervillains in his powerful avatar. He also has to stay clear of the attempts by the army to capture him, and Dr. Bruce Banner clearly has a bit too much on his plate. This animated series featuring the Hulk is often regarded as the best Hulk cartoon out there, and the claims aren't too far off. We love the portrayal of Dr. Bruce Banner as a tough guy instead of the wimpy comic book version. The stories are quite intriguing, cooking up serious situations like the Hulk's secret revealed or the Hulk being shrunk. Action comes thick and fast, which ensures that the episodes have no dull moments. As for the art style and animation, the visuals hold good even today, and true comic book lovers will appreciate bringing in the stories from the best years of Hulk comics. Check out this hidden gem, and you'll not be disappointed. Solar Man 1986. The titular Solar Man is a teenage comic book artist who's very passionate about science fiction. After a dying alien scientist gives him a special bracelet, he's able to turn into the mighty Solar Man, a flying superhero powered by solar energy. When evil cyborg-like beings threaten to destroy the sun and the Earth, it's Solar Man to the rescue. Although this ended up being a short film that was aired on Fox Kids Network as a special presentation, it was initially created as a pilot episode for an entire series. It's rumored that a major studio wanted to invest as much as $15 million to have 64 episodes of Solar Man animated series, but they pulled out after being advised by consultants superhero cartoons on Saturday morning slots would die out soon. We have to admit that Solar Man as a superhero is either a hit or a miss. There are some cartoonish aspects of him that might not be appreciated by a mature audience, and the writing for the pilot episode wasn't exactly breathtaking. It ended up being generic and cliched, but if the comic book story arc was sincerely followed, Solar Man could have ended up being something substantial. Pride of the X-Men, 1989 This is an X-Men adaptation that focuses on Kitty Pride as the main character after she's welcomed into the X-Men team. Together with the other mutant superheroes, she must find a way to stop Magneto and his Brotherhood of Evil Mutants from their sinister plan of crashing a comet into Earth. The pilot episode was supposed to bloom into an entire series, but this Marvel and Sunbow Productions joint effort never released the rest of the episodes. While Pride of the X-Men may not have enjoyed the kind of success we associate with the 90s animated series, it did pave the way following a positive reaction from the fans. The artwork was largely faithful to the comic books, and the voice acting was above average in spite of the rather liberal voice casting. Wolverine's Australian accent does sound a bit weird, but the others definitely are on their A-game. The narrative does feel a bit rushed, but there was only so much to do in an effort to cram in all that story in such little time. This X-Men pilot episode had a lot of potential, and it's unfortunate that we never got to see the rest of this interesting idea. X-Men The Animated Series 1992 The promises made in the 1989 pilot episode were finally materialized in this 1992 animated series featuring the mutant superheroes, the X-Men. 
In a world where mutants or people with genetically endowed superpowers are discriminated against and persecuted, Professor Charles Xavier's Academy for Gifted Children helps them train and control their powers. It also functions as the headquarters for a superhero team that fights against corrupt and bigoted government agencies, as well as some hateful villains like Magneto and Apocalypse. This is easily one of the finest moments in the Marvel Animated Universe, and the reasons are plenty. It's a show that redefines people's hatred and prejudices against each other through some very interesting story arcs featuring mutants. The X-Men might be a team of superheroes, but their plight of being hated by those they protect is a moving aspect of the narrative. The action sequences have some wondrous elements for the kids, and the detailed and atmospheric animation takes the storytelling to the next level. The writing is witty, emotional and intelligent, and it's backed by some skillful voice acting as well. In a nutshell, this is truly an earnest adaptation of a classic Marvel comics, and it's more faithful to the comics than the movies will ever be. Spider-Man The Animated Series 1994 The 90s are definitely when superhero cartoons peaked from both Marvel and DC, and to match the brilliance of Batman The Animated Series, Marvel came up with the likes of X-Men and Spider-Man Animated Series. This animated adaptation of the friendly neighborhood superhero pits him against some of the notable Spider-Man villains, and the narrative also touches upon his struggles to enjoy a normal life away from his superhero duties. With famous comic book stories like the Symbiote Saga and Secret Wars being adapted successfully, this is rightfully regarded as the crowning glory for Marvel animation. People who grow up watching this cartoon series are truly blessed, because there's not much that the show gets wrong. From perfect scripts to impeccable casting in the voice acting department, Spider-Man's best stories simply come to life with this one. The villains like Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, Kingpin and Venom are all fun to watch, and the above-average animation works captures the faithful storylines. This is probably one of the most accurate representations of Peter Parker and his friends and enemies, and the action-packed, eventful episodes never allow a dull moment. It's a very special series for millions of Spider-Man fans all over the world, and even today, we love to check out a few episodes over dinner. Fantastic Four 1994 The Fantastic Four has to be one of the most popular superhero teams in the Marvel Universe, and this is another attempt to explore their adventures. It starts off in a familiar fashion, where Reed Richards, his friend Ben Grimm, wife Sue Storm and her brother Johnny Storm gain superpowers after being exposed to cosmic radiation in space. They use their superpowers to fight threats on the Earth, such as Doctor Doom, Galactus and Latverian King, and together they make the best of their special individual abilities. This animated series didn't have the best of starts, and the first season struggled with poor animation and weak story arcs. However, things quickly changed for the better after the show was renewed for the second season and a different animation studio was handed the charge. All of a sudden, the comic book adaptations were faithful, and the visuals did justice to the characters. The second season also introduced the Inhumans, easily one of the best moments of the show. The voice actors like Chuck McCann and the others were up to the task, and the series became a lot more serious and appealing than the initial few episodes. This may not be the best Fantastic Four animated adaptation, but it certainly ranks right up there among the toppers. Iron Man 1994 the industrialist superhero is at it again, this time fighting the forces of evil with his private team of superheroes. His company is under a constant threat from the likes of Mandarin and Justin Hammer, and Tony Stark needs to don his special weaponized armored suit to teach them a lesson. However, in his effort to protect Stark Enterprises and the world, Iron Man also has to battle his own demons and ego problems that cause problems within his own team as well. It's not often that we get to see the Force Works superhero team working alongside Iron Man instead of the Avengers, and the series offers something new in this regard. The first season can be disappointing, but things improve leaps and bounds pretty quickly. Suddenly, the bad humor, poor animation and silly plots were a thing of the past. This series did bring forward a more child-friendly version of Iron Man, ignoring his alcohol addiction and womanizing tendencies, but we don't mind with all the entertainment on offer. Overall, the show still remains a mixed bag because of the disappointing first season, but it's still a decent animated show that deserves to be on your watch list. Ultra Force 1995 Ultra Force is a lesser-known Marvel superhero team that doesn't get enough attention from the fans. This animated series brings you the story of the Ultras, a group of individuals who were once human but now possess superhuman abilities. A few members of the Ultras, such as Lord Pumpkin and Sludge, wage a war against peace and humanity, and the US government forms a team to counter them. This team is led by the first Ultra to reveal himself, Art Case, and a few other sincere warriors who are together known as the Ultra Force. In many ways, Ultra Force comes across as an adult animated series because of the intense narrative and the depth of the plot. Aside from getting acquainted to a bunch of new Marvel characters, the viewers will also be treated to some non-stop action that keeps coming. There are plenty of explosions, fight scenes, and the fast-paced narrative hardly offers you a breather. The animation is breathtaking and loud, and we also love the realistic sound effects that make the action scenes stand out. If you're a fan of high-intensity action in a simplistic story arc, this is a series that you simply can't miss. The Incredible Hulk 
1996. Bruce Banner is a nuclear scientist with a strange affliction, where he turns into a powerful and gigantic green monster every time he gets stressed. Ever since he was exposed to gamma radiation, Bruce Banner has the tendency of turning into the Hulk, where his extreme powers often fail to do the good that he intends. The army believes him to be a threat, and is after his life, and he also has to tackle a few other enemies who want to get rid of him. The episodes explore the adventures and heroics of the Hulk as he continues to struggle for a cure. This criminally underrated animated series has a killer first season that left the fans asking for more. Not only is the storytelling perfect, the season even ends on a cliffhanger, setting things up beautifully for season two. Unfortunately, the second season fails to keep up with the expectations and brings down the standards of the show. The Incredible Hulk is powered by a really good voice cast, including the likes of Luke Perry, Mark Hamill, and Matt Frewer. The animation looks pretty great as well, and things would have been perfect if they didn't force She-Hulk and Grey Hulk into the scheme of things. In spite of the flaws, this is still one of the best 90s Marvel shows, and this lesser-known masterpiece deserves more recognition. Men in Black The Series 1997 Every sci-fi fan is aware of the alien fighting hit movie Men in Black, which is based on a comic book series published by Marvel. This animated adaptation takes you back to the heroics of Agent J and Agent K as they face the extraterrestrial problem in New York City head-on. They work for a secret organization that keeps the alien threat in check and also prevents the general public from knowing about these dangers on Earth. This series proves how affected the animated medium can be, as it makes use of every factor that made the 1997 movie a popular hit. The stories here cover more than the movies could, and we even get a more detailed look into Agent K's past and the history of Men in Black. The episodes are usually standalone in nature, but the overall series still has a loose continuity that keeps the fans hooked onto the show. Some episodes, like the Black Christmas Syndrome and the Lost Continent Syndrome, are truly unforgettable, and some genuinely good animation work makes the visuals stand out. If you want to enjoy the best of Men in Black spiced with some goofy, mindless fun, then this is the show to watch out for. Silver Surfer, 1998. Galactus is a lethal cosmic giant who drains entire planets of their life force in order to survive. When he sets his eyes on a planet named Zenla, Norin Rad steps up and strikes a deal with Galactus, promising him to scout for uninhabited planets in exchange for Zenla being spared. Galactus then chains Norin into the powerful Silver Surfer, but this cosmic wanderer soon rebels against his master. In retaliation, Galactus hides Zenla in an unknown location, and the Silver Surfer keeps looking for his lost home through a series of adventures. The gritty story and detailed characterization was a great way to explore the Silver Surfer, who first appeared in the Fantastic Four comics. The show boasts of some great animation, and there are some very interesting episodes right till the end of the first season, which ends on a cliffhanger. To its credit, the show even managed to turn some of the lame characters from the comics into interesting ones, and the well-thought-out approach to execute Silver Surfer's story arc is visible in every episode. Even though the series had pretty good ratings, Marvel couldn't renew it for a second season because they were facing bankruptcy. The story had tons of potential, and it's a tragedy that we couldn't enjoy a longer run of this classic. Spider-Man Unlimited 1999 while Peter Parker was covering a shuttle launch headed for a planet named Counter-Earth, he discovered Venom and Carnage on board before the launch. However, Spider-Man failed to stop them and got blamed after all contact was lost with the shuttle. Soon, he discovered that the crew on the shuttle were trapped on Counter-Earth and armed with a new costume and weapons. Spider-Man headed out to this new world. Here, he found that a tyrant named the High Evolutionary was ruling over an oppressive regime, and Spider-Man joined the fight alongside the rebels. Spider-Man Unlimited wasn't your traditional version of the superhero, and one had to be cool about random upgrades in order to appreciate the show. We liked the fresh twist in the Spider-Man story arc, and the narrative managed to shine, even with some average animation. Maybe it was a show ahead of its time, landing up in the right place at the wrong time. Just like Silver Surfer, Spider-Man Unlimited was supposed to have a second season, where 13 episodes were created with six produced scripts. However, they were never animated, and we missed out on the solo adventures of Spider-Man after he helped the Rebels in the war against the High Evolutionary. If only such terrific shows could enjoy a longer run. Avengers United They Stand 1999. The world's foremost superhero team, the Avengers, assemble one more time in this animated series led by Ant-Man. The superhero team includes Wonder Woman, Wasp, Hawkeye, Falcon, Scarlet Witch and Tigra, but the three members of the Avengers, Thor, Captain America and Iron Man, have rare appearances. Together, they take on various Avengers-level threats like Ultron, Kang the Conqueror, Masters of Evil, and other notable villains. 
This animated series came under a lot of flack from the fans for twisting and changing the comic books. The characters are a far cry from what the comic book lovers are familiar with, and the makers seem to have taken the easy way to please children with cheap and cheesy versions of the superheroes. Even the villains like Ultron don't look the part, and the animation quality doesn't exactly scream of excellence. Costume changes have rarely been a hit with the fans, and this cartoon series fails miserably in introducing random changes. It's surprising that the show managed to last a full season, despite getting so much hate, and this is one Avengers adaptation that you wouldn't regret missing. X-Men Evolution 2000 The mutants in the X-Men universe are always caught up in a dilemma over how to use their powers, and these conflicted characters are brought to life yet again in this animated series. The mutants working in the X-Men team have increased challenges to deal with, and were introduced to teenage versions of Jean Grey, Cyclops, Rogue, Nightcrawler and other heroic mutants as they fight for the world that never accept them as their own. More people are aware of their mutant identities, and more enemies close in as the mutant superheroes continue their struggle against all odds. X-Men Evolution defies the expectations expectations, even though they don't follow the set comic book versions of the characters. The stories are well set, where even the subplots have more depth than some of the disappointing X-Men movies. The younger versions of familiar characters have been well sketched out, and the voice acting shines under a team of experienced actors on board. The animation is truly beautiful, and surpasses a lot of the contemporaries, and the influence of anime is very obvious in the visuals. Sit through the first season as the makers take some time to introduce the characters with their backstories, and you'll be surprised by the quality content in this series. Spider-Man 2003 The Marvel Animated Universe has an overwhelming amount of Spider-Man content, and this series is another feather in the cap. It looks into the struggles of Peter Parker as he tries to use his spider-like superpowers to fight crime. He's humbled by failure, and takes up the mantle of Spider-Man with proper responsibilities, as he's forced to fight some deadly supervillains. He also needs to find a balance between his love life with Mary Jane and his job as a photographer for the Daily Bugle. This animated series was developed by MTV, and this meant that the narrative was free from censoring that was usually the case for children's shows. Shows. Characters were shown to die on screen, and we even get some foul language in the interactions between characters. This mature Spider-Man romp was a huge hit among the fans, and the adrenaline-charged action scenes came back to back to entertain the viewers. Many of the familiar characters got some innovative makeovers, and some high-priced voice talents like Michael Clark Duncan and Ethan Embry did a fantastic job. MTV decided to cancel the show even though the ratings were impressive because they felt that the series didn't fit properly with the other programs that were on the air. Even though it ended abruptly, this version of Spider-Man will be remembered by the fans for being a unique take on the familiar superhero. Fantastic Four – World's Greatest Heroes 2006 There have been previous iterations of the Fantastic Four, but this version has its own take on the team's origin story and their fights with the villains. Once again, the four unique superheroes, Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, The Invisible Woman, and The Human Torch are up against ruthless opponents like Doctor Doom, and the episodes explore their multiple adventures. This animated series is a wonderful translation of the comic books, and it's one of those Fantastic Four shows that gets everything right. The combination of 2D and 3D animation is sure to blow you away, because the visuals are like your rare encounter. The voices for the characters take some getting used to, especially reads, but it's nothing that'll ruin your experience altogether. The scripts aren't just cheesy and corny, even though the show is largely targeted toward children. The humor's on point, but it never takes over the narrative, which many superhero shows are guilty of. You'll like the mature approach in handling the relationships and subplots within the episodes, and this version of Fantastic Four has some of the best story arcs that you'll ever come across. Ultimate Avengers The Movie 2006 Back in 1945, Captain America froze in the Atlantic Ocean while fighting the Nazis. After 60 years, he's discovered and thawed out to life, just in time for him to deal with another crisis. A shape-shifting alien race called the Chitauri, who had helped the Germans during World War II, is still active and determined to destroy the US. Nick Fury leads a team of Avengers, where Captain America joins the likes of Iron Man, the Hulk, and other superheroes to battle this alien threat. The star of this animated movie is the suspenseful story that keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time. The animation quality is also spectacular, with a fine mix of computer animation to enhance the realism of a few scenes. The characters are developed nicely, and the well-written dialogues add a lot of weight to these characters. The makers didn't take the usual route of hiring celebrity voice actors for the roles, but the casting is done right with every character sounding exactly how they should. To top it off, the action is top-notch, and with supreme production values, this animated flick will make both the Marvel fans and non-fans fall in love with the superhero universe. Ultimate Avengers 2 2006 This Ultimate Avengers movie picks up from exactly where the last movie left off. The alien menace, the shape-shifting Chitauri, have attacked Wakanda this time, and Black Panther's father, T'Chaka, is killed. Following this tragedy, Black Panther travels to the US to seek help from Captain America, and the Avengers assemble yet again. The team of the world's mightiest superheroes head out to Africa to be a part of the bloody war that will determine the fate of humanity and Wakanda. Can the Chitauri be defeated permanently? While the first Ultimate Avengers animated movie was pretty good, this one 
one is definitely a step up. The character development seems to have taken centre stage one more time, and the animation continues to be brilliant. You'll notice a mature approach in the storytelling, and there can be nothing more exciting for the Marvel fans than watching Captain America, Hulk, Thor, and other superheroes battle it out against a worthy opponent. The haunting undercurrent of the musical score is breathtaking, and the action is grittier than the first movie. Overall, this is a wonderful movie that has all the elements that you can possibly want from an Avengers animated flick. The Invincible Iron Man 2007 If 2006 was all about the back-to-back -back Avengers animated movies, 2007 wasn't to be left too far behind with a solid Iron Man flick featuring the cocky industrialist Tony Stark. This time he unwillingly unleashes an ancient prophecy and resurrects the Mandarin, a violent Chinese dynasty. After his best friend James Rhodes is kidnapped and Tony Stark is badly injured, he develops a specialized armored suit fitted with high-tech weaponry. Now he has to fight Mandarin's henchmen and put an end to the evil force that he unleashed in order to protect the Earth. It might be an unfair comparison, but this movie seems slightly better than the Ultimate Avengers movie, which were impressive enough in the first place. The story is longer and more intense, and we simply can't get over the mesmerizing visuals, courtesy of the 3D fight sequences blended with 2D animation. However, even though the combat sequences look really cool, don't expect the best Iron Man outfits here because he's just developed his suit, according to the story. The voice actor for Iron Man fits very well, and even though this isn't a faithful comic book adaptation, we still rate this highly among all the Marvel animated flicks out there. Doctor Strange 2007 Doctor Stephen Strange was one of the finest surgeons in business, but a terrible car crash left his hands shattered and crippled. The embittered doctor heads to a hidden community in Tibet after medical science fails to cure him, and he comes across the mysterious Ancient One. Here, he's taught to let go of his ego and painful past, and he's granted the gift of magic. After completing his training, he's made the new Sorcerer Supreme, but he must immediately put his learning to test as a terrifying group of monsters threatens human existence. Can Doctor Strange set things right with his new acquired powers. Doctor Strange is one of the most charming characters in the Marvel Universe, and this animated drama takes you through his gritty origin story and one of his best adventures. The tone is dark enough for the adults to enjoy, and Bryce Johnson does a terrific job in voicing this evergreen character. The narrative does a hell of a job in showing who Doctor Strange truly is, and there's plenty of action to keep the adrenaline pump going. The animation may not look the best, but this is largely because of the lack of a proper budget. The climactic moments handle a bit too much in too little time, but credit is due for the makers that it still doesn't feel rushed in any way. If you want to experience the animated origin story of Doctor Strange, there's no better movie that we can suggest. The Spectacular Spider-Man 2008. Here comes another animated series exploring the life and heroics of young Peter Parker. He gains his superpowers while experimenting with spider DNA, and now he fights crime in a flashy suit to hide his identity. His alter ego works as a photographer for a magazine, and he leads a humble life jeopardized with all the struggles of a young adult. The episodes take you through his origin story and many of his unforgettable adventures against some familiar Spider-Man foes. The Spectacular Spider-Man is a high-tech reboot of the friendly neighborhood superhero, and it offers an abundance of entertainment through every episode. The animation style is anime-like, and the brilliant visuals will leave nothing to complain about. The stories in each episode are infused with the right amount of drama, action, humor, and in-depth character development, and this certainly redeems the web-slinger after a few disappointing outings in the animated universe. Josh Keaton as the voice of Spider-Man is quite believable, and the other members of the cast also pull off their A-game. In short, the show is true to its name, and this spectacular effort from Marvel needs to be appreciated by a wider audience. Next, Avengers – Heroes of Tomorrow 2008. The Avengers are the Earth's mightiest superheroes and the ultimate protectors of the planet. But what happens when the superhero team is eliminated by a superior opponent? Next Avengers tells you the dark aftermath of the killing of the Avengers by Ultron. Now, the onus is on the children of the Avengers, who are still young to take up this crucial challenge. They must take on the enemy who killed their parents and also protect humanity while avenging their parents' death. This is a great attempt by the Marvel Universe to bring in some innovation, and the end result will leave you pleasantly surprised. The plot might sound like a blatant cash-grab attempt to appeal to the kids, but the movie is far from such marketing gimmicks. The next generation of superheroes having to embrace their destiny offers a hard-hitting story, and the execution looks beautiful thanks to the supreme animation work. We also need to spare a word for the musical score, which fits the tone and theme of the movie perfectly. The voice acting for the children is fun to hear, but the one for the villain truly steals the show. If you dare to let your imagination run wild, this will be a delightful watch for you. Wolverine and the X-Men 2009. This X-Men animated series starts off with some conflicts within the team of mutant superheroes. The team is disbanded and everyone goes their separate ways, until there's a crisis that forces them back together. 
A government-supported organization called the Mutant Response Division is created to detain all mutants, and the evil Brotherhood of Mutants is also at work. This prompts Wolverine to gang up the scattered heroic mutants for a greater cause. Can the X-Men unite once again for the inevitable war knocking on their doors? It was initially believed that the show would largely target a young audience, but there are many adult issues that have been maturely handled in the course of this storytelling. Even though violence is kept to a bare minimum, the action scenes are thrilling and exciting. A generous dose of humor makes sure that things never get too serious, and we love how the stories always remain faithful to the comic books. The character designs are accurate, and the episodes take you through some of the characters' origins, which is always fun to see. This series had the potential to match the brilliance of the 90s animated series, if only the makers forced for a longer run. Iron Man – Armored Adventures 2009. This animated series presents a younger version of Iron Man after he loses his father in a plane crash. Tony Stark is the heir to the billion-dollar Stark International, and he intends to honor the legacy of his father by protecting those less fortunate than him. He develops a remarkable armored suit fitted with deadly weapons, and his technological inventions make him a superhero capable enough to take on great threats to world peace such as Mandarin, Iron Munger, and many others. This may not be the perfect adaptation, but the original stories and the high production values are sure to win you over. The animation style takes some getting used to because it's largely computer-generated, but the makers have done a fine job with this technique. We can't get over the unique armor and costume designs, and all the villains look sleek and high-tech. The episodes are packed with loads of action and drama, and you'll always be kept guessing about how the stories will end. Yeah, there's a couple of boring episodes here and there, but overall, this is one of the finest Iron Man animated shows out there that every Marvel fan must check out. The Superhero Squad Show The Superhero Squad brings you a unique team of Marvel superheroes, including Iron Man, Wolverine, Hulk, Silver Surfer, Thor and Falcon. It all starts off as a fight for the possession of the Infinity Sword, which is the most powerful object in the universe. However, during a fight between Iron Man and Doctor Doom over the sword, it's shattered and the fragments are scattered all over the world. Now, the superheroes struggle to obtain the fragments before Doom and his evil minions get to them, and the intense duel heats up further. The show either grows on you, or it's simply not your cup of tea, and there are no two ways about it. You have to remember that the series is based on a series of action figures from Hasbro, and it's aimed at kids. It portrays Marvel superheroes from a cartoonish perspective, and the narrative gets far too juvenile at times. The light-hearted take on serious characters can be funny for some, but most die-hard fans might find it annoying. The silver lining for the show is the animation work, which is truly flawless with some amazing character designs. If you're willing to put your judgmental cap away and be sporting enough to enjoy some childish fun, you might just like the show. But let's just say this isn't Marvel Animation's finest hour. Marvel Superheroes What the? 2009 This is an attempt by Marvel to self-parody itself through stop-motion animation using superhero action figures. It's in line with their tradition of comic book satires, and there's no point in equating this with the rest of the Marvel animated projects. We have to start off with the disclaimer that this series is more of an acquired taste. The episodes are not in line with the conventional Marvel characters or story arcs, and every sequence is simply a satirical take on the existing structure. The humor's top-notch, and the narrative never fails to make you laugh with the hilarious antics. The stop-motion animation is done well, and it looks exactly how it should, albeit in a different way from the usual animated shows out there. The episodes are majorly based on the What The series from Marvel Comics, and the adaptation is faithful enough. Those who can handle a different style of parody and humor will find this series to their liking. Hulk vs. 2009 What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Well, we're about to find out, as the mighty Hulk takes on the fierce Wolverine and the god of thunder, Thor, in this animated movie. The first story explores the events after the Hulk goes on a rampage into Canadian territory and encounters Wolverine, who must stop this brute monster. In the second story, the Hulk is brought to Asgard by Loki to get his revenge on his half-brother, Thor. When the Hulk threatens to destroy Asgard, Thor takes it upon himself to teach the green giant a lesson. Of course, things are easier said than done. Hulk vs. is like a dream come true for all those Marvel fans seeking the thrills. The production values are sky high, the animation is mouth-watering, and above all, the action-packed content between the greatest superheroes is a nail-biting affair that you'll relish from the beginning to the end. The story might be simple, but the execution is quite interesting, making you guess about the potential outcome of the contests. The encounter between the Hulk and Wolverine shows how deadly a killer Wolverine really is, and the Hulk vs. Thor story arc delves more into subjects like honor and code, and less into the bloody action territory. Both the stories have a distinct flavor, and it makes for a package that can't be skipped if you like some adrenaline pumping in your veins. 
Black Panther 2010. Black Panther, the young ruler and protector of Wakanda, is perhaps one of Marvel's unsung heroes, but this short animated series does a great job in capturing the heroics of this brave warrior. When an evil tyrant named Ulysses Claw invades his homeland, Black Panther must make use of his technological prowess and insane fighting skills to protect his people. It'll also be an opportunity for him to avenge the death of his father, who was previously killed by Claw. Black Panther was released as six TV episodes, but it tells a continuous story that's beautifully complex and deep. The politics and the plot can be mildly controversial, but the intelligent writing takes your focus away from such petty issues. You'll be left spellbound by the terrific artwork, which is a cross between regular animation and highly evolved motion comics. The action's really impressive, with a fair bit of blood and violence without overdoing it. The best thing about the short animated series, however, is that it ranges over time and space to convey the myth of Wakanda, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time. It's definitely a show worth watching, and Black Panther doesn't have too many better animated adaptations than this. Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes 2010 A massive prison break across New York City leaves the S.H.I.E.L.D. prisoners vulnerable and as many as 74 supervillains escape in this sinister plan hatched by some evil mastermind. It's a threat beyond the capacities of a single superhero and the likes of Iron Man, Ant-Man, Thor, Wasp and the Hulk get together to narrow down the prisoners and get them back behind bars. Following the success of this mission, the team of superheroes realizes the need for an Avengers team like themselves in order to counter greater threats and protect the Earth from evil forces. The episodes comprise of their multiple adventures as the superhero team assembles to get the job done each time. Captain America, Hawkeye and Black Panther also join the team in future episodes. Many term this version of the Avengers as the perfect adaptation, and they aren't exactly exaggerating. The show depicts the characters perfectly, and they all look and sound like how every comic book reader would imagine in their heads. The outstanding storylines and great animation make for an exciting combo, and each superhero portrayed in the episodes has their unique personality. The fight scene are intelligent, and instead of mindless combat, the villains are defeated smartly by using science and quick thinking. Such a great Marvel adaptation that the only flaw we can find in the series is that it ended a bit too soon. Planet Hulk 2010 Iron Man and his fellow superheroes are tired of dealing with the antics of the Incredible Hulk, and they find it increasingly difficult to control his berserker rage moments. They ship him off in a spaceship, headed to an uninhabited planet, but the Hulk manages to crash it on a planet under a tyrannical regime. Here, he's initially enslaved to fight as a gladiator, but his incredible strength makes him survive the deadliest of duels. Some of the oppressed inhabitants even start to believe that the Hulk is a part of some prophecy to relieve their troubles, and it remains to be seen if the green monster will protect the innocent against the oppressive ruler. The animated movie is a faithful adaptation of a story from the Incredible Hulk comic book series, and the intriguing plot gets our attention immediately. The comic book probably has more depth in the story, but the cinematic attempt is pretty impressive and never feels rushed. The action sequences aren't held back, and there's a fair bit of blood and violence across the narrative. The makers had to replace Silver Surfer from the comics with Beta Ray Bill because of rights issues, but the characters have been handled with care. The voice acting is also commendable, especially with Rick D. Wasserman as the voice of the Hulk and Paul Dobson as Beta Ray Bill. Overall, this is an exciting Marvel animated project that promises a lot of fun and entertainment for the viewers. Iron Man 2010 Tony Stark's already proved his skills as a superhero in his special suit, but he now wants to retire from the superhero duties and focus more on the expansion and development of Stark Industries. He heads to Japan as a part of his expansion plans, but here he comes under attack from the mysterious Zodiac Cartel, who even steals his suit. Tony Stark has to make a comeback as a superhero and protect the people of Japan from this nefarious organization, and the challenges are much higher for him than ever before. This is another Iron Man adaptation based on the original comics, and even with the subtle changes here and there, the makers seem to have done a fine job. There are some wonderful characters in the narrative who actually make the experience memorable for the viewers. Some will have you seething in rage, and others will make you cry, as a talented team of voice actors brings them to life. This Marvel anime project spanned across 12 episodes, and the visuals are wonderfully executed by the Japanese developers. This may not be the best Iron Man story out there, but it's certainly a fun series to watch for the sake of the unique storyline. Marvel Super Heroes 4D 2010 This animated 4D film was launched at Madame Tussauds London and Madame Tussauds New York with two different stories. The London version starts off with the major Marvel superheroes in Buckingham Palace to receive awards from the Queen for their services. However, they have to resume their superhero duties when London is attacked by giant robots. The New York version explores a deadly attack by Doctor Doom on Stark Industries, which prompts the Avengers to unite against the threat. This short animated movie promises to be a nice break from the usual cinema fare, and the 4D experience is truly overwhelming. 
It's a sensory delight that can't be explained to those who haven't witnessed the movie because it's truly unique to have jets of air and water sprayed at you when Spider-Man spins a web or the Hulk sneezes. People who were present for the event were having a gala time with this New Age experience, and Wolverine slashes being felt with a jab in your back isn't something you get in your average Marvel production. We don't know if 4D is going to be normalized in the future, but for superhero movies and sci-fi projects, it might be a game-changer if done right. Thor, Tales of Asgard, 2011 This is one of Thor's adventures before the god of lightning and thunder was worthy of wielding the mighty hammer Mjolnir. As the young prince of Asgard, he was eager to prove himself as a great warrior, and he set out with his half-brother Loki in search of the Sword of Surtur in Jotunheim. However, his journey proved to be far more difficult than he anticipated, and Thor had to make use of something more than his brutish strength to get themselves and their people out of trouble. This is the beginning of a long journey that finally makes Thor a mighty avenger and protector of the innocent. It's a creative animated movie based on Thor's teenage years, and the bromance between Thor and Loki, or their chemistry with the Warriors 3, is fun to watch. The narrative offers one of those rare moments where we see Loki as a loving brother and a loyal Asgardian, and that is heartbreaking in a way because Marvel fans know how they become mortal enemies in the future. The humor in the script is subtle, yet enjoyable, and we wish that the animation quality wasn't as childish as they made it into. This animated flick comes with a nice moral lesson, which is crucial for any superhero story. Having great power is not everything, and it's the knowledge of using that power that counts. Thor Tales of Asgard is not a blockbuster by any stretch, but it does make you witness a side of Thor and Loki that's seldom seen in the Marvel Universe. Wolverine 2011 Wolverine will have to take some drastic actions in order to protect his romantic side in this brief animated series. The story starts off with Logan being asked by an old friend in Japan to take down the notorious Shingen Yoshida crime syndicate. Besides the righteous intention to fight this evil gang, Logan has another motivation to go after this organization. His lost love, Mariko, is captured by the crime syndicate after her father forced a marriage on her. Luckily for Logan, he's not alone in this endeavor, and a female assassin named Yukio helps him along the way. Can Wolverine prove himself to be a worthy lover? and protector while fighting this powerful syndicate. Marvel anime segments impressed with Iron Man, and Wolverine was no exception. We loved the action-packed alternate take on the familiar Marvel superhero, and his mission to rescue his lover from a powerful gang proves to be a thoroughly exciting plot. The violence in the narrative will keep all the Wolverine fans interested, and we have to spare a few words of praise for the anime style that looks breathtaking. The fast-paced series is probably the finest vision of the character in popular Asian art style, and it does a great job in popularizing Wolverine all over the world. If Marvel and anime combinations sounds as promising to you as it does to us, this short series is a must-have in your watch list. X-Men 2011 In this Marvel and anime collaboration, the X-Men find themselves up against one of the most sinister adversaries of all time. When the mutant superheroes reunite following the death of a teammate, Phoenix, they discover that a lot is at stake and Hisako Ichiki, a mutant girl in Japan, has been kidnapped. To make matters worse, the X-Men also have to deal with the threat of the U-Men, a group that kidnaps mutants and harvests their organs to strengthen their own army. There's also the risk of a deadly virus that turns mutants into monsters, and the heroes must put up the best show to end up on the winning side this time. This will be a treat for all the anime fans, because everything from the approach of the narrative to the visuals is done in a typical anime style. The same story continues across the episodes, and the twists and turns keep you guessing the whole time. The dialogues could have done with some improvement, and sound really cheesy at times, but there isn't much else wrong with the project. One of the most enjoyable aspects about this brief animated series is that we get to see Wolverine's berserker state in full glory, because the makers didn't have to submit to censor norms and tone it down. This version of X-Men is a mature animated adaptation with some childish elements as well, and those with a taste for experiments will appreciate the efforts. Blade 2011 Every true Marvel fan is familiar with the legendary half-human, half-vampire anti-hero Blade, the Vampire Hunter. This time around, Blade has a chance to avenge the death of his mother as he heads to Japan to eliminate a sinister vampire organization. His mission soon puts him at odds against the deadly Deacon Frost, the powerful vampire who's also responsible for the death of his mother. Can Blade put an end to the menace of this secret vampire organization and settle his scores with Deacon Frost? This is another of the impressive Marvel anime projects, and the brief animated series is probably the best of the lot. It's entertaining, even for those who aren't familiar with Blade and his adventures, and you're bound to fall in love with the over-the-top action sequences and sword techniques. The villain in Deacon Frost is sufficiently brutal and sadistically evil to be the perfect opponent, and the story never gives you a breather in terms of the constant thrills and shocks. The show may not be as bloody as some of the notable vampire-slaying epics out there, but it's still one of the best animated Blade adaptations ever made.
Ultimate Spider-Man 2012 This version of Spider-Man is premised after a year of Peter Parker having his spider-like superpowers. It's finally the chance for Spider-Man to enter the big leagues and make an impact after he's offered by Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., to be a part of a special training program. Here, Spider-Man has to learn to fight alongside other superheroes who are his fellow students in the training, and they have to endure the crime-fighting duties together. Can Spider-Man finally become the ultimate and most effective version of himself? Usually, most of the Spider-Man adaptations so far depicted a lone wolf who would occasionally team up with other superheroes. This time around, it's a whole different story. Spider-Man can be seen teaming up with some notable Marvel superheroes like Blade, Moon Knight, and even the Avengers. Spanning across four seasons, the show enjoyed a long run because of its popularity, and even the animation was wonderfully done. The voice acting team includes celebrities like Clark Gregg and Dove Cameron, and the voice acting leaves nothing to complain about. There are too many memorable stories and remarkable characters in this series for anyone to ignore the brilliance of what is possibly one of the best Spider-Man shows of all time. The Fury Files 2012 This animated series comprising of four-minute micro-short episodes is very different from the usual Marvel animated projects that we've covered so far. The Fury Files is all about Nick Fury, the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D., giving the viewers a glimpse into the top-secret video dossier on various superheroes. He talks about their unique powers, fighting styles, and special features in these four-minute episodes, and it feels like you're sitting for a presentation from the one who basically calls the shots for all the notable Marvel superheroes. It'd be unfair to judge the Fury Files in the same league as the other major Marvel animated projects. The show is simply intended for some harmless fun, and the makers don't go overboard with the visuals or story arcs. The episodes explore superheroes like Hawkeye, Power Man, Nova, Iron Fist, White Tiger, Black Panther, and many other heroes and villains from the Marvel Universe. Chi McBride is appropriately cast as the voice of Nick Fury, and the episodes are fun to watch for those who are interested about some special trivia featuring these characters. Avengers Assemble 2013 Falcon has been the newest recruit in the Avengers team, and he acts as the eyes and ears of the viewer in this animated series. We get to see his account as he fights alongside the other members of the Avengers, such as Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. Together, they encounter various Avenger-level threats across the five seasons, from Red Skull to Thanos to Kang the Conqueror, and their adventures make for the episodes. Although the premise of the show seems promising enough, it doesn't really count when you take into consideration that a show as great as Earth's Mightiest Heroes ended to make way for this. Avengers Assemble doesn't offer anything unique as such, and everything from the animation to the art style is submerged in mediocrity. The story is monotonous, and almost every episode features the exact same characters doing the exact same things, and saying the same dialogues over and over again. The earlier seasons are still better, but it goes downhill pretty fast from season 4, when the makers wanted to introduce some major changes. The fans weren't pleased to have such a disappointing version of the Avengers, and you simply can't blame them for bashing this mediocre show. Iron Man Rise of Technovore 2013 Iron Man is finally up against someone who can match his technological expertise. Ezekiel Stane is a young tech genius who develops a techno-organic armor that's superior to that of Iron Man. During a surprise attack, Iron Man tries to deter the opponent, but a lot of innocent bystanders are killed in action, including his best friend, Lieutenant James Rhodes. To make matters worse, Iron Man is detained by the S.H.I.E.L.D. for questioning, and he finds himself framed for things he didn't do. Even though he breaks free, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are in pursuit, and Iron Man has to clear his name and deal with the enemy before it's too late. For this mission, Iron Man enlists the services of the ruthless vigilante, the Punisher. Can the two get the job done against a technological superior opponent who's planned everything to perfection? This Iron Man movie isn't the finest hour for Tony Stark, and it's obvious that the budgetary constraints affected the quality big time. The main superhero is a far cry from the aura created by Robert Downey Jr. in the live-action movies, and the villain is the cliched bad guy in anime. The voices for the various characters are barely okay, and the animation quality is probably the only silver lining in this maze of dark clouds. The visual experience is truly unforgettable, and it feels like a synthesis of Iron Man and Gundam. Overall, this animated movie might be good enough to kill time, but it features nowhere among the great Marvel animated projects of all time. Hulk and the Agents of Smash 2013 The Hulk has been fighting supervillains for a long time, but the world continues to view the Hulk as a dangerous monster. His friend Rick Jones is determined to fix his image, and he films the world-saving heroics of the Hulk. The Big Green also teams up with She-Hulk, Red Hulk, Scar, and his friend Rick Jones to fight the evil forces in front of Rick's camera, recording everything. Will the teamwork finally create the rightful image of the Hulk in front of the public? The series may have been an attempt to sell toys, but the show is much better than simple marketing gimmicks. This is not a mindless version of Hulk filled with rage, and, and viewers will like the offbeat humor in the narrative. The chemistry between the characters makes the show enjoyable, and there are also some very interesting storylines to keep you engaged. Imagine a big action-packed reality show featuring superheroes, and that's exactly what you get here. 
Lego Marvel Super Heroes Maximum Overload 2013. This five episode mini animated series features the mischievous Loki who's at it again with his plans of conquering the Earth. He's assembled an army of supervillains to get the job done, and once again, it's up to the Avengers to prevent his evil plans. Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Spider Man, Wolverine, and many others assemble to deal with this special threat to the planet, and the stage is set for a grand face off. Lego animation isn't everyone's cup of tea, but this animated series featuring five four to five minutes episodes promises to be a joyful watch. The characters are truly hilarious, and this version of Loki will end up becoming one of your favourites. The dialogue writing is usually the standard Marvel stuff, but the witty jokes and banter make it memorable. The fun gags will entertain both the kids and adults, and everything from the animation to the voice acting were done alright. Watch it for a different experience altogether, if not anything else. Iron Man and Hulk Heroes United 2013 It all starts after a couple of Hydra scientists attempt to supercharge a Stark arc reactor by using Hulk's gamma energy. They end up creating a being of pure electricity who's hungry for destruction. Iron Man and the Hulk must put the differences and ego clashes aside to get together and face this threat to the planet. They also have to brave their way through killer robots and Wendigos, and even the mightiest heroes will have the toughest of times to control the situation. There's plenty wrong with the movie, and one of the biggest problems is that the makers seem to have failed to understand the characters properly. The animation quality is poor and disappointing, and logical loopholes run wild throughout the narrative. The exciting and suspenseful story could have been handled much better, with a more thoughtful execution, but it's still worth a one-time watch. Avengers Confidential, Black Widow and Punisher 2014 The vigilante superhero Punisher and Black Widow are sent on a mission by Nick Fury to get a hold of black market weapons dealer Kane. He possesses some stolen shield technology, and the hero soon learn that a terrorist organization named Leviathan is behind the whole deal. The organization intends to sell the shield technology to the highest bidder, and time is running out for Black Widow and Punisher to set things straight and retrieve the stolen stuff. It is unfortunate how often Marvel ends up ruining some of the finest stories with below par execution, and this is another such example. The story's intriguing and well-written, and the narrative feels like it's straight out of the comic books. However, the involvement of Madhouse Studios, who had previously created classics like Ninja Scroll, ends up being a mixed bag. The voice acting falls short, and the decent animation fails to revive the show. Maybe if you view this as more of a marketing experiment than an animated movie, hmm, you won't be so disappointed. Iron Man and Captain America Heroes United 2014 There's been an evil alliance formed by Red Skull and Taskmaster, and they intend to unleash an entire army of Hydra brutes into the world. This serious threat to the planet can only be negated by two of the greatest Marvel superheroes coming together, Captain America and Iron Man. However, for them to work together, they need to set aside their personal issues and appreciate each other's skills for the greater good. The saga of disappointing animated movies continues with this one, as yet another project fails to impress the fans. The uniqueness of the plot isn't utilized at all, and the rather monotone voice work doesn't help the course. The humour is anything but funny, and the childish dialogue is almost cringeworthy. The painfully bad and lifeless animation adds to the long list of problems, and you'd miss absolutely nothing if you never watched this animated flick. Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers 2014 We're all familiar with the Avengers as the Earth's mightiest superheroes, but this time around, they have allies who aren't superheroes. In a fight against Loki and his tyrannical empire, the Earth's protectors are helped by a group of teenagers who prove to be more than a handful support. We could say that the show was somewhat intriguing, and it wouldn't be an overstatement. The idea of superheroes being helped by five teenagers is undeniably interesting, but the execution is just not right. The storytelling feels juvenile at times, and there's no visual appeal in the animation work either. The hardcore Avengers fans might not be too pleased with the idea of their favourite superheroes turned into Pokemon equivalents when they're captured. And all in all, this show might be worth a shot, just for experimental purposes. Big Hero 6 2014 This animated superhero movie is loosely based on the Marvel comic superhero team that goes by the same name. It tells the story of a special bond that's formed between a young prodigy, Hero Hamada, and a giant inflatable robot named Baymax. When their city plunges into trouble, Hero teams up with a group of friends and they become the high-tech superhero team known as Big Hero 6. Fans didn't have very high expectations from the movie, but the end result turned out to be a pleasant surprise. The storytelling is fast-paced and the animation is just outstanding, with a flurry of rich colours and textures and detailed backgrounds. The characters, the detailed backstory and the writing are all flawlessly done, and this is a solid Disney, Marvel and anime hybrid that's nothing short of masterful. Guardians of the Galaxy 2015 This animated series takes you on a wild ride along with the entire team of the Guardians. After finding an artifact linked with the DNA of Peter Quill, a secret map is revealed which leads to a powerful weapon called the Cosmic Seed. This weapon is capable of creating a new universe, and the Guardians must find and protect it from the evil forces who can misuse the Cosmic Seed. With the likes of Loki, Thanos, the Collector, and the Grand Master also after the powerful weapon, the contest is about to get spicy. This version of Guardians of the Galaxy offers a best of both worlds. It's a great 
great standalone show and also a great continuation of the live action movie. The narrative captures the characters perfectly, and the interesting plots will entertain both the children and adults. There's a generous dose of humour in the episodes, and you'll also enjoy some peppy soundtracks along the way. The voice acting could have been handled better, but this animated series is still a bright star in the skies of the Marvel Animated Universe. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes Avengers Reassembled 2015 Ultron has the perfect plan to take over the world and disrupt the functioning of the Avengers. It's taken over Iron Man, and soon the other superheroes notice that he's acting different. The others must find a way to regain control of Iron Man and his armor before Ultron successfully executes his nefarious scheme. This LEGO animated short runs for around 20 minutes and it delivers exactly what you'd expect. Loads of humor and fun storytelling. Besides the goofy LEGO humor, the animation quality here is surprisingly stunning. The heroes look pretty good on screen, and there are some unexpected characters like Yellow Jacket and Iron Spider thrown in the mix of things. Even the voice acting is pretty remarkable, and for an animated short made for children, there isn't much that goes wrong with this version of LEGO Marvel. Marvel Superhero Adventures Frostbite 2015 Who'd have thought that the powers of Santa Claus could be used to conquer the world? Well, as it turns out in this animated movie from Marvel, Loki and the Frost Giant Ymir have this grand idea to utilize Santa's powers for their plans. However, the Marvel heroes stand in their way, and their grand adventure is a perfect feature for the winter holidays. It would be unfair to criticize this animated flick based on the assumptions that we have for serious movies. Frostbite is strictly intended for children enjoying their Christmas vacations, and it does the job without being a grand affair. The story Story's fun to watch as Rocket and Groot join the Avengers in their struggle against Loki. If you can look past the goofy Santa in the movie and all the juvenile jokes, it might be a decent pick to enjoy with your kids. Hulk, Where Monsters Dwell 2016 This director video animated feature revolves around Hulk caught up in a sticky situation. The Halloween nightmare has a devious plan, where it intends to turn every dreamer into a monster in an effort to take over the waking world. It's up to Doctor Strange and the Howling Commandos to help the Hulk sort out this messy affair before it's too late. For a director video Halloween themed movie, the idea is pretty interesting. You'll get to enjoy some solid action sequences, and each one of the voice actors has done a decent job. The low lighting does affect the visuals, but the makers probably did so in in order to highlight the creepy aspect of the narrative. It's heartening to see some characters that you usually don't get to see on screen, and for a fun Halloween movie night, this might be something that you warm up with before getting to the serious stuff. Marvel TLDR 2016 This is the perfect miniseries for those who aren't too familiar with Marvel's long comic series and story arcs featuring the epic characters. Here, each episode brings you comedic summaries of major Marvel events and stories, and it's like a fun recap in quick time without the tedious task of going through the extensive comic books. The thing that makes this show enjoyable is the humorous take on some familiar characters, which can be enjoyable even for those who are familiar with their story arcs. The makers managed to come up with funny and interesting stories about these characters, and watch out for some particular ones like Deadpool to trigger major laughs. It's the perfect miniseries to break away from the serious movies and shows and have a good light-hearted experience. Marvel Funko 2016 Please welcome the pop-style Marvel heroes as the likes of Spider-Man and Iron Man take on the trickster Loki and his mind-controlling scepter. The action-packed duels turn into comedic chaos in no time as the miniseries brings you a version of superheroes that you've never seen before. Those who are enthusiastic about action figures and collectibles will be familiar with Funko Inc., the American company that manufactures some of the best pop culture collectibles. Their tie-up with Marvel resulted in some memorable action figures, and this miniseries is simply a marketing tool to sell the merchandise. Of course, of course, there's no point in being too critical about a show that doesn't take itself too seriously. Watch it only if you're interested in the collectibles, or you can just pretend like Marvel Funko doesn't exist. Spider-Man 2017 If you had a dollar for every time Marvel worked on an animated project featuring Spider-Man, you could enjoy a pretty good meal. This animated series is yet another take on the journey of Peter Parker after he's bitten by a radioactive spider and acquires superpowers. The episodes explore how he comes to terms with his new role as a costumed vigilante, and how he balances personal relationships alongside his superhero duties. This is a show that grows on you if you're fine with the changes that are introduced. Many of the characters that you see on screen are different from their original versions, and even Spider-Man takes a more scientific approach than before. The narrative isn't faithful to the comics, but you have to consider that the show is targeted toward children. The art style and animation improves along the episodes, and this fresh take on the age-old superhero is definitely worth giving a try. Marvel Superhero Adventures 2017 It's time to move aside from the serious and world-changing side of the gallant superheroes in the Marvel Universe. The short, four-minute episodes bring you tales of Spider-Man as he teams up with major Marvel characters. However, more than the dangers and seriousness of the missions, the focus is on teaching the viewers a thing or two about friendship and cooperation. The series offers an amusing and playful take on the Marvel superheroes, and those who aren't comfortable with the idea should look elsewhere. The narrative is perfectly suited for younger kids, and it's a fun way to familiarize them with the Marvel Universe before bringing them more serious.
this stuff. The light-hearted vibe of the show is its selling point, and the formulaic episodes promise to be a neat, harmless cartoon for preschoolers. Big Hero 6, the series, 2017. This animated series takes place after the events of the movie, and we're taken to witness further adventures of 14-year-old genius Hiro Hamada and his compassionate robot friend Baymax. Together with his other friends, they form the unique superhero team and deal with several villains by relying on their high-tech superpowers. The movie was a major success, and this follow-up doesn't let the fans down. Of course, the animation quality here is not the same as the movie, and the transition from CGI in the movie to 2D animation is noticeable, but it still feels like a worthy sequel with the kind of humour that we enjoyed in the movie. The action isn't disappointing either, and there are some new characters who have been added to the narrative, which makes things all the more interesting. The episodes have a wonderful balance between serious storylines and fun light-hearted plots, and if you've enjoyed the movie, you'll surely find this successor to be just as entertaining. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes – The Thanos Threat 2017 The LEGO Marvel Super Heroes are back again, and this time it's the Guardians of the Galaxy in the limelight. Thanos and his gang, including the Ravagers, are after the Build Stone and its incredible powers. The task for the Guardians of the Galaxy is to defeat the combined forces of Thanos and deliver the Build Stone to the Avengers for safekeeping. This 22-minute fun LEGO spin-off is a fun flick for the family. The animators have done a fine job in capturing the personalities of the Guardians and reproducing them in LEGO forms. There's also the typical LEGO Marvel feature humour that makes the narrative enjoyable, and even though it's essentially an attempt to sell toys and merchandise, the short film doesn't disappoint. The LEGO series isn't for everyone to appreciate, but if you're into that sort of thing, well, this particular venture will be an amusing watch. Marvel Future Avengers 2017 This Japanese superhero anime series introduces you to the next generation of Avengers who are training under the Avengers. It all starts when a young boy named Makoto gains superpowers following a gene manipulation experiment conducted on him. He joins hands with a few other children with superpowers, and they serve as apprentices for the Avengers, preparing for their future duties as protectors of the world. While the anime world gets things right more often than not, Marvel projects are usually where they slip up. This version of Avengers will not get a smile out of the hardened fans because everything from the voice act to the animation style is pathetic. The dialogues are terrible, and complete with poor storytelling, the show just comes off as a cheap knockoff. The characters do have a lot of potential, and this is an idea that can be exploited to create a much better product in the future. Marvel Rising Initiation 2018 Ghost Spider has been wrongfully framed for the murder of her friend Kevin. She goes on the run after S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are after her, and superheroes like Ms. Marvel, Squirrel Girl, Patriot, and Quake are assigned to bring her in. Can Ghost Spider prove her innocence before the team of superheroes gets to her and she's punished for the crime she never committed? This could have been an interesting addition to the Marvel Universe, but it fails to deliver on its promises. The story lacks the depth that's required for a show to succeed, and poor writing doesn't help the course. The characters that have been used here have much much better comic book story acts, and even though the voice acting is decent, it's simply not enough to save the day. If we have to describe the show in one word, we just say terrible and move on to the next one. Marvel Rising Secret Warriors 2018 This made-for-television animated movie is the first full-length feature from the Marvel Rising franchise, and it tells the story of a group of relatively underrated Marvel superheroes. Here, you have teen superheroes such as Ms. Marvel, Squirrel Girl, Patriot, Quake, America Chavez, and Inferno, as they set out to protect the universe from a threat that's approaching fast. This movie's surprisingly decent, even though the execution could have been a lot better. The story's well-written, and so are the characters, and you have to excuse the goofy cheesiness at times considering that this is, after all, a cartoon-based movie. There are some strong morals and messages for the kids, and the animation is also above average. If you're okay with Marvel feeling a little too Disney, well, this can be a fun movie to check out. Marvel Rising Chasing Ghosts 2019 The New Age Marvel superheroes are at it again, and this time the focus is on Ghost Spider, who's up against villains like Exile and Sheath. However, Ghost Rider is not alone, and a team up with the Secret Warriors might just boost the chances of victory. The only hiccup is for the team leader, Quake, who has to convince Ghost Spider to join the team of superheroes. The Marvel Rising franchise gets better with this entry, and the credit is largely due for the vibrant characters that have been introduced and handled with finesse. Ghost Spider looks pretty cool, and the other superheroes also look the part, some even reminding the viewers about their appearances in the comic books. The only issue with the movie is that it feels a bit rushed, with so much happening in so little time. Marvel Rising is not about your usual Marvel venture and superheroes, and those who are fine with the idea will end up enjoying chasing ghosts. Marvel Rising Heart of Iron 2019 Riri Williams is far too young to be in college, and this makes her feel socially isolated out there as the youngest student. But her life is about to change drastically with a sudden turn of events, where Hella the Accuser attacks her college laboratory and kidnaps her best friend. Now, 
Riri must follow the footsteps of her idol, Iron Man, and use her heroics to save the day. Those who have never heard of the characters in this movie will perceive this as a cheap Iron Man knockoff, and they wouldn't be too wrong. This attempt from Marvel Rising falls short in terms of the story, but you can stay for the beautiful art style that makes the visuals stand out. The characters are copycats of already established ones, and the childish writing doesn't make the narrative engaging. The movie isn't captivating by any means, but you can still give it a try, considering that the franchise is more of an experimental project, and you might just develop a taste. I take pride in being the Black Panther. Were you happy? LEGO Marvel Superheroes Trouble in Wakanda 2018 The LEGO versions of Marvel's mightiest superheroes are back in action, and this time the limelight shifts to Black Panther and his homeland of Wakanda. Two of the notable Black Panther villains, Eric Killmonger and Ulysses Claw, have hatched a sinister plan with the crazy Titan Thanos in order to steal vibranium from the mines of Wakanda. Now, Black Panther has to team up with the other superheroes to prevent their ambitions. This can prove to be a wonderful experience for kids who aren't familiar with the real version of Black Panther and the seriousness of his story arcs. The idea of Black Panther fighting alongside other superheroes to protect Wakanda gives off strong Infinity War vibes, but it's made for kids, and the narrative is adjusted accordingly. We also like the updated LEGO level humour, and if having animated LEGO characters in action is not a turn-off for you, we suggest that you give this one a try. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2018 This animated movie opens up the possibilities for the most interesting version of Spider-Man and Spider-Verse that you've witnessed so far. The story revolves around Miles Morales, a high school student who's bitten by a radioactive spider and gains certain superpowers. Little does he know that he's about to be caught up in the middle of an interdimensional conflict, where the fate of the multiverse will rest on his actions and decision-making. We don't know where to start talking about the brilliance of this movie. Everything from the gripping plot to the drop-dead animation will leave you mesmerized. The different versions of Spider-Man are exciting to watch, and the vibe is incredible with blaring pop music and non-stop action. The groundbreaking visual style is the first of its kind, and we're all for this fresh version of a different Spider-Man universe. For many, this movie restored the faith in Marvel animation, and it's a must-watch for all the fans out there. Spider-Ham Caught in a Ham 2019 This short four-minute animated flick featuring Spider-Ham could be ignored had it not been a prequel to the genre-defining 2018 movie Into the Spider-Verse. The brief plot starts off with Spider-Ham enjoying a hot dog when he's suddenly kidnapped by Dr. Craw Daddy. Spider-Ham manages to get the better of him, but he's swallowed into a portal that takes him to an alternate dimension. It'd be ridiculous to be harsh on something that's only four minutes long, and this animated short is actually well worth seeing. You get a quick introduction to his Looney Tunes-like world, and you'll never be able to to unhear John Mulaney as Spider-Ham. The narrative is vivid, energetic, and it's a nice little prep before you head into the complicated world of the Spider-Verse. I thought I told you, I don't like people messing up my neighbor. LEGO Marvel Spider-Man Vexed by Venom 2019 Green Goblin and Venom have a devious plan of destroying New York City, and the only person standing in the way is the friendly neighborhood spider-powered superhero. It seems like a classic Spider-Man movie plot, except for the fact that everything here is a LEGO version of themselves. Welcome to Marvel's LEGO Universe once again. Judging by LEGO movie standards, this is a nicely animated special that has quite a gritty storyline and some awesome car chases. The brand of humor that one associates with the LEGO universe is there, oh, and there's also some good music to soothe your ears. But the only problem that we have with the movie is that it's far too short to do the story justice. It could have well been turned into a 3D animated full-length feature, and the movie would have been a lot more popular. We do it Hawk's way. My ocean trash collector! LEGO Marvel Avengers Climate Conundrum 2020 This particular entry into the LEGOverse takes you through a unique premise, where Tony Stark's new invention, a versatile weather machine, is stolen. In order to prevent this powerful machine from being in the wrong hands, Hawkeye and Black Widow give chase, and the high-speed chase across New York City is troubled by some hostile weather conditions thanks to the machine. This cool miniseries from the LEGO franchise is far from a preachy climate awareness project. The story is fun, and there are some exciting moments in the narrative to have your attention the whole time. The episodes are amusing, and we wish that the makers came up with a second season to follow up. As we've said before, the LEGO universe is not for everyone, and if you're in for this sort of thing, well, go for the series only then. What If 2021 The multiverse is a truly vast domain filled with hundreds of major events. But what would happen if some of these major events happened differently than they did? What If is a reimagining of such situations and thus exploring a multiverse of infinite possibilities. The Marvel audience is led into an uncharted territory, and the very premise is so exciting that you'll sit through the entire series. The scenarios are all thought-provoking, and the series wastes absolutely no time in explaining the details of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with these scenarios. The stories are captivating, and the voice of the familiar MCU 
MCU characters adds a realistic touch to the narrative. You'll enjoy some memorable and hilarious one-liners, and there simply couldn't have been a better tribute to the journey of MCU so far. This could be a nice little cue for the Marvel Universe as to how to go ahead with things in the future. The world by bringing it to its knees! Attack! Modoc. 2021. Modok might be a serious threat in the Marvel Universe, but this animated series throws up a comical and hysterical side of the supervillain with a really big head and a tiny body. He struggles to have control over his evil organization, which seems to fall apart courtesy of his inconsistent actions, and Modok also has to deal with his demanding family along the way. The series doesn't take itself too seriously, and neither should you. There's a fair amount of hilarious jokes to be enjoyed, and the nods to the main Marvel canon are hard to miss. We love the animation work as well, and the voice cast is done perfectly keeping the characters in mind. If you don't mind giggling throughout the few episodes of this series, Modoc will be worth all your time. Meet Webster, a supercomputer. Spidey and his amazing friends, 2021. The young superheroes realize that the best way to take down mighty supervillains, such as Green Goblin, Doc Croc, and Rhino, is to team up with the pros of the game. So, the likes of Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and Gwen Stacy all gang up with Marvel Legends Hulk, Black Panther, and Ms. Marvel to get the job done. The title nicely sums up the concepts of this series, and it's been so successful because of how popular the narrative has been among the kids. Yet, the show is purposely childish, but it's not so silly that the adults can't enjoy. The colorful and bright and animation provides some stunning visuals, and you'll also appreciate the well-voiced characters. Look no further if you want to introduce your kids to your favorite superheroes. Lego Marvel Avengers – Loki in Training 2021 The mischievous half-brother of Thor now has a change of heart, and Loki wants to join the Avengers team. However, before he's drafted in, Iron Man will put him through rigorous training so that he's up for the challenge. The test comes pretty soon for Loki when Thanos arrives on Earth, looking for him. This is another decent short film that keeps up with the standards of the Lego universe. You shouldn't expect anything breathtaking or out of this world, but the movie will give you 22 minutes of non-stop fun. The humor is top-notch, and the animation is standard in the Lego Marvel universe. Watch it only if you like the previous Lego adaptations that we've explored already. Boy, you have bad time to escape, my man. This will be up a party tonight. Super Crooks 2021. Based on a popular Marvel comic, this animated series focuses on a small-time crook named Johnny Bolt. He has his plans for one last heist, and he recruits a group of supervillains to get the job done. But when a superpowered crime boss gets in their way, it's a comedy of errors and loads of action to follow. This anime TV series ensures that each one of the characters is fleshed out nicely, and the writers have done a wonderful job in integrating the storyline into the Jupiter's legacy universe. The sense of humor is prevalent across the episodes, and you'll become a fan of the over-the-top violence. If you're looking for a new anime series with a creative and original storyline, well, look no further because the super crooks are here. I could turn Battleworld into a new Asgard, and then rule! Marvel Battle World – Treachery at Twilight 2021 The treacherous god of mischief and magic, Loki, has hatched a plan with Thanos to win back his battle world. However, the Mad Titan is being double-crossed by Loki, who actually intends to get his hands on the mystical weapon called the Twilight Sword. It's up to a handful of Marvel superheroes to prevent this from happening and save the world. This miniseries is pretty basic, and there isn't much to look into it. The story could have been captured on a grand scale, but the makers haven't attempted anything of that sort. The animation quality is mediocre at best, and the narrative is pretty forgettable. In short, this Battle World miniseries can be skipped without missing anything major in the Marvel Universe. Stolen? Thanks again for going on the snack run, Scott. I feel terrible about your van. It's LEGO Marvel Avengers – Time Twisted 2022 This LEGO Marvel adaptation has a gripping plot, where Thanos has stolen the Quantum Tunnel. He now has the ability to change history, and the Avengers will have to put up their best efforts to prevent the Mad Titan from changing everything as it used to be. This minifilm's worth watching simply because of the cool plot, which is usually not something that you associate with such projects. The overall theme is pretty basic, and there's the usual humor that you get in such projects. The superheroes look amusing, and so does the miniature action sequences. The LEGO lovers might be in for a treat if they give this one a try. Hit Monkey 2021 A Japanese snow monkey has been wronged under a well-planned conspiracy, and now it's out for vengeance. The snow monkey is helped by the ghost of a seasoned American assassin, and this unlikely alliance runs through the underworld of Tokyo like carving through cake in this action-packed adventure. This series will take you by surprise, and the episodes are planned to perfection with a gritty storyline in the mix of things. The narrative has serious undertones along with the perfect balance of humor and sadness, and there are some badass action sequences as well to keep you interested. The animation might look a little rough, but it's too little the floor in this underrated masterpiece. Hitmonkey certainly deserves a second season, because the story has tons of potential, and it's easily one of the best Marvel projects in the recent past. 
I Am Groot 2022. This animated series takes you on an adventure alongside a toddler version of Groot as he grows up alongside his friends and family. The Guardians of the Galaxy team is there to guide him, and you'll also be introduced to some unsung characters in the process. This series of shorts is nothing but harmless fun, and you have to appreciate it considering that it is in no way linked to the greater aspects of the MCU. The narrative is charming and filled with adorable characters, and Groot steals the show as the cutest of them all. There is a tinge of darkness in the stories, but nothing serious enough to take the smile away from your face. Enjoy the humorous stories with decent animation, and the show will prove to be a worthy, light-hearted entertainer for you. Baymax 2022 If you're familiar with Big Hero 6, <laughs> you surely remember the giant, inflatable, friendly robot Baymax who helped the superhero team. This animated series takes you on a journey alongside Baymax as he continues doing what he does best, helping those around him in every way possible. This miniseries is absolutely adorable, and the wholesome narrative will leave a smile on your face. The short episodes comprise of five minutes of actual story and get straight to the point. There are no overarching plots, and it's all about our beloved robot teaching us some valuable lessons. The narrative is funny and thought-provoking, and the show is perfect for kids who can enjoy this between the meals without any contamination of violence and other complications. <laughs> Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur 2023. A 13-year-old genius kid named Lunella, aka the Moon Girl, somehow brings a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex into modern-day New York City through a time portal. She has the ability to swap minds with the dinosaur, and this helps them navigate through various dangers in the city. However, he doesn't control the actions of the dinosaur entirely, and this leads to some pretty amusing situations. This animated series will be a fun throwback to the original comic books featuring the genius little girl from the Marvel Universe. The animation, the gadgets, and the costumes have all been tailor-made to remain faithful to the source, and it's heartwarming to see how the series highlights the importance of friendship and acceptance. The wonderful music and vibrant atmosphere of the show will draw in the kids, and this fun little series can be enjoyed with your family for some good times. Good guys, we are. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse 2023 This is a worthy sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, and this time, Miles Morales teams up with Gwen Stacy to stop the crazy scientist named Spot from harnessing the powers of the multiverse and changing everything from how we know them. Miles Morales also encounters a team of Spider-People who are responsible for protecting the multiverse. After a clash between the heroes over how to deal with the new threat, it's time to address the bigger problem and get the job done. This animated feature is one of Marvel's best moments in 2023, and it's a step up from a masterpiece. It's a special milestone for animation, and the visuals are mind-blowing, to say the least. The jokes and references to the Spider-Man lore are perfectly done, and all the characters are crafted exactly how you'd want them to be. There's some real drama, action, emotions, and tons of suspense to keep you thrilled and geared up for the next installment of the Spider-Verse. It's time to wait with bated breath for the third movie in the franchise to address all of our unanswered questions. Do let us know in the comments below which ones in the list are your favourites, and which ones you're yet to watch. Also, tell us about Marvel's upcoming animated projects that excite you the most, and which Marvel character deserves more attention in the animated universe. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!